Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Zulywood, the Polar Quest. Zulywood is brought to you by Blue Piper Studios. It's for two players, ages 10 and up, and games range anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. Zulywood is the greatest film production company in the animal kingdom. Production is about to begin on Zulywood's next big blockbuster, known as The Polar Quest, and a talented penguin is needed to play the starring role. Two famous penguin actors have made it to the final audition, but only the best penguin can win the part. So your goal here is to get all 16 of your eggs placed out onto the board, or put your opponent into a situation where they are no longer able to perform any of their three possible actions. Now, setup in this one is very much meant to get you into the game very quickly. Now, each player is gonna receive their own set of eggs and penguins. These are what you're gonna be using across the board, and there's two different colors. And you'll randomly choose a start player. Now, the interesting thing about setup is the fact that there's these scene cards. It is a movie you're making, after all. You're grabbing one of these scenes. In this case, we've set up scene two. On the card, it shows you all the things you need to set up, excluding icebergs in this one, and it's important to note that we are using an upgraded components for this video. But it also shows you the event cards that you need to set up the event deck. You'll shuffle those all together. Now, interesting thing is that each of these scenes has a story element to them, which is really clever, I think. The great icebergs. Icebergs block the little penguin's path. But the seagull flies up high for a bird's eye view to help find the way through. And so you'll set up all those elements on the board. You'll draw four event cards, secretly keeping two. Then the rest of the cards are shuffled back in to make the final event deck. Now, what you'll also do though, is grab your opponent's egg and you will place that out into the board and then you can begin. So on your turn, you'll be performing one of three actions. The first of one we're gonna take a look at is the landing. And this is simply, you're gonna be placing an egg out into the field of play. And the way you place these is on the grid lines where they connect. And then you can play one of your event cards. Now, event cards are gonna do all kinds of different things. They allow you to place additional eggs out. You might be calling a truce. You might have a cliffhanger of sorts. But just know that event cards are very powerful and can really help you throughout this game. And all these event cards are super thematic. In this case, we're taking a look at stunt double. Yes, you're bringing in a stunt double. You're under the table, you're doing negotiations, you're doing calling for truces, you're calling for extras, all kinds of things you'd expect from a movie. But just know that these event cards can really change up how you'll play the game and aid you in getting your eggs out to the board much faster. The next action we're gonna take a look at is hatching one of your eggs. And what you're gonna do here is replace an egg with one of your penguins, and it's that simple. But then you get to go to the event deck and draw two cards, or actually look at the top two cards, and you'll get to decide which one you want to keep and which one to put back. You can also choose to put it back on the top of the deck or at the bottom of the deck. But this is just another way to get you more event cards, and it's important to note that you can only have four event cards, so you might have to make some tough choices and discard some. But that's really to turn your egg and hatch it into a full-fledged penguin. And the last action you might take advantage of on your turn is exploring. And this is kind of the meat of what you'd really need to be doing. You're gonna take one of your hatched penguins and you're going to move them across the board until you hit a barrier. Now there's all kinds of barriers in this game and we're just showing you the icebergs here, but there's like emperor penguins, there's the seagull. There's lots of different things that can happen, storms and things like that, but it's all based on the scenario that you're playing or the scene that you're playing. Now, you're gonna take your penguin and move it as far as it can move until you hit one of these types of barriers. Now, it, you know, if it's one of your eggs, that is also considered a barrier and will stop your movement. And the same holds true for your penguin. Now, if you hit one of your opponent's eggs, you'll replace that, not replace the egg, but you'll remove the egg and put it back into their supply. However, you cannot do that to an enemy penguin. 
there is no fighting on the set, so that would be an illegal move. So you have to move in a direction where you have a free movement, so to say, until you hit one of those predefined barriers. But why are you doing this? Well, this is what's cool, is that in your wake, you're going to be placing eggs. And this is one of the main ways to get eggs out of the board. And what's also cool is that it's super slippery and you don't fall off the edge, but you do loop back around. So you have all kinds of amazing possibilities about how you can place those eggs on any one turn. I saw some really big turns where tons of eggs came out. So that's really the key here, right? In the end, you want to have all 16 of your eggs out and prevent your opponent from doing any of their actions in order to win. And yes, you can play event cards during this explore phase. You have a choice. You can play them before or after you perform your movement. So it might be important to save it for after you complete your movement. But again, all these barriers are going to perform or, pe or behave a little differently. So you want to be super choosy about which of those different barriers that you use and like the seagull moves and things like that. So you want to look at all the different options as you are moving your penguins across this board. And so the player who has their 16 eggs on the board or who has prevented their opponent from performing actions will be declared the winner. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, I am a fan of abstract games, and it's not often that you get an abstract game where the theme so strongly comes through as this one does, and it's super cute and super fun. I had, had a blast with this game. Now, again, everything you saw here, I'm using the upgraded components, so keep that in mind. And again, all the different types of event cards can really change up the game. And as you pick a different scene, you'll have different event cards that you can tap into. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.